What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Next Win Podcast. I'm your host, Aunt Ma, co-host Justin Fasur, and we have a special guest today, the number one Airbnb guy in Las Vegas from teacher to this. This is going to be an amazing story, a lot of value added. Guys, welcome. Jason Griggs, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, boys. I appreciate it. He's actually our first guest. Let's yeah. go. This is awesome. So, um, I'm excited to have you uh, speak about your story today, your personal story Before we start, we're going to hear some quick words from our sponsors. Today's sponsor is Zinju Chili Oil, a crunchy garlic chili oil, a.k.a. Chili Crisp. And Zinju won the 2022 Scovie Awards. They got first and third place, right? They got two awards. Uh, OG Batch is the normal spice level. They actually got third place. And then X Batch was their spiciest for all you heat lovers out there. Got first place in the Scovie Awards. Wow. And they're also vegan, right? They are vegan. And also, Zinju Chili wants to send you guys a free 9-ounce jar. All you got to do is cover shipping. Uh, Go to their website, Zinju.com, or click the link in our description box below and use the promo code WINNING to get your free 9-ounce jar. Thank you, Zinju Chili Oil, for sponsoring this video. All right, today's sponsor is going to be Giftlux. Uh, They have this handcrafted, customized gift. The owner who hand-delivers this Mm -hmm. to every home, uh, White Glove Delivery Service, so wow. basically, if you just bought a home, uh, realtors, if you want to buy this for your clients or a family member want to buy this for someone's uh, new housewarming gift or even for a birthday celebration or a holiday, you guys can reach out to giftlux.net. Um, and it's actually the giftlux.net. You know, you can order any kind of custom package that you want. You can see here. Justin, what do we have here? Yeah, so this is basically the full experience right here. So you got your beverage, which can be uh, tequila, whiskey, or whatever the case may be. You got the cups to put it in. You got the orange. For the flavor and the garnish. Yeah, and then you also got your cutting board to cut that garnish up. Um, With a knife. (laughs) Oh, snap. It has a knife, too. Yeah, it comes with a knife. Okay. Yeah, and then now we also have um two cigars you know i love that um after drinking something nice and i want to celebrate right a, a nice win with a cigar exactly and then if you're ready for a snack we got a little snack for you too so it's a complete full service experience for you guys um this is awesome so if you guys want to do this for anybody that you know you can go to thegiftflux.net uh, use promo code winning to get 20 percent off uh, code expires in about two weeks so guys uh, thank you, Giftlux, for sponsoring this video. We're going to start with some heavy hitters. Let's go. How many homes do you own right now? 27 homes. 27 oh homes. Gosh. Yep. That's amazing. Um, and how much do you make a month off these homes? So right now, it's funny because I just built out a, a rental spreadsheet calculator. It took okay. me about a month to build out, and it's perfect now. And so right now, I'm making $11,000 profit a month over my mortgage, my take-home cash flow. Nice. Wow. Um, and in about seven years, when I pay off a good portion of, of my rentals, I'll be at 28000 a month. Okay. That's amazing. So 27 homes and you're 11000 a month passive income. Passive income profit. That's Currently. Crazy. Right now, yeah. I mean... That's, that's, yeah, that's super crazy. Right? How long did it take you to kind of develop that whole... So I've been doing it for seven years. Seven years? This is my seventh year doing uh, buying investment properties. Wow. And right. are they all Airbnb or are they long-term rentals too? They're mixed. They're, They're mixed. not all Airbnb short-term rentals. They're mixed between long-term rentals and short-term rentals. Okay. Well, I, I'm interested in hearing uh, Jason's story about how he, he went from being a teacher <clears throat> to getting $11,000 a month on <laughs> passive income. So before real estate, what did you do and where were you? So I was living in, I'm from Long Island, New York. Okay. I grew up, both of my parents were teachers. So it was kind of like instilled in me to be a teacher. They both were teachers and, and they liked their job. Um, it's a very blue collar job. It's yeah. nothing crazy. You know, get summers off. That was always their big thing. And, um, it, it you know, that was just like the direction that they really gave me. And so... I went to school. I went to school at West Virginia. Uh, I played lacrosse there. I'm a big lacrosse guy. And then I went to grad school for a year and a half back in Long Island. And then... Um, you were going to school to become a teacher? Yeah, to be a teacher. Wow. I didn't know that people went to school for being a teacher because all of my friends who are teachers, I mean, they just had their normal four years and that was it. 
Uh-huh. I mean, is that is that what you did? It's just yeah. So where I'm from, like the schools, the school districts are very. It's a high level school system. Okay. It's Vegas is kind of lower. <laughs> right. Um, but I would say one of the worst. It's in the one country, of the worst right? in the country. Right. But where I'm from, yeah, you have to go to school. Uh, to be a teacher. So I went to school to be a phys ed teacher. Okay. Um, I felt like uh, I was just a jock. I was into sports. And I just kind of fell into the being a phys ed teacher. That's crazy. I have a friend that just became a PE teacher. And they're just like, hey, we don't have one right now. Do you yeah. want to be the PE teacher? And <laughs> yeah, it's it, just a parent. It's kind of like that a lot of places. But where I'm from, it's very hard. It's a difficult yeah. job to get because... The school once you're in the there, are different. once yeah. you're in there, you're like you're in there for 50 years. Whoa. <laughs> you know, because nobody leaves that job. It's, it's such like a, a good game. job. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I finished grad school and then my best friend, Tommy, was going to UNLV. And okay. he was like, he's like, you got to come out here and check out Vegas. And Why? I was like, all right. He's like, it's so much fun. Well, what mm. about it is like. It's just Vegas. Like okay. I was 20 years old. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was coming yeah. out. I was having fun. We were going to the 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 pools we were going to the nightclubs what year was this this was 2010 okay so yeah things were still popping pretty crazy yeah so you know the market crashed and then it kind of started going back up and so long story short i just fell in love with it i just kept coming to visit him and then one day he was like you would i think you would like it if you moved here yeah Mm -hmm. and i was like well that's a great idea and so I was uh, plowing snow, my cousin Joe, in Brooklyn, New York. That was like my little side job that I did in the winter. And okay. I was like, look, my buddy's like telling me like, well, this real estate is like super cheap. It's like $40,000, $50,000 for a condo. Yeah. Mm. And he was like, okay, let's buy one. And that's how it started. My cousin bought a condo. It was like half off. Yeah. So you guys partnered up with it? You know, I didn't even partner. I had no money at the time. Okay. So okay. he just bought it. He just bought it. Um, he just bought the condo, and I was like, "Can I go out to Vegas and see if I could get a job?" And so right now you're in New York. Your your yeah. cousin already bought this condo in Vegas, and you're a teacher at this. Moment. I, I wasn't even a teacher yet. Oh, so you so, just went to school yeah, for I it, just, but you never right? was a teacher. No, I, <laughs> I was. Uh, I just finished grad school. Okay. So I, I didn't have a job, and it was hard to get a job in Long Island, where I was from. And so finally, I I just came out. He gave me the keys to the condo. He's like, go set it up. You know, make sure it's all good. Um, I'll give you the summer. And as I was about to go out there, I applied for a job on Craigslist being a phys ed teacher. Yes, at that time, Craigslist was on Craigslist. Craigslist, yeah. I've got a lot of jobs on Craigslist. And, And so... I remember it like yesterday. They called me and they were like, you're hired. If you're because wow. like the New York like stature of of teachers are just on a higher level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they were like they hired me over the phone. I had no clue. So I flew out to Vegas. Yeah. With, I had a job kind of lined up and I went to the school. It was in a really bad part of town off of uh, Ann and Carrie. Is Martin like Luther North, King. And North Karen. side. Yeah. North side. Yeah. And I had no idea. And I just took the job. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was making 28000 a year. That was my first job. And I, I was like, cool, this is awesome. Yeah. I was in Vegas. I was having fun. And then as I started, you know, I was like three or four months in, I started learning about the industry. And I, all these people were making big money at the nightclubs and bartending. Right, right. And I'm like, wow, they're making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year doing that job, and I'm only making twenty eight thousand dollars. One hundred fifty grand for bartending? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah they make it gets pretty money. crazy. In twenty ten. Yeah. Yep. So we're talking about like two hundred k now. Yeah. That's crazy. What are we doing here, guys? I know. <laughs> well, so, well, we're making big money in real estate. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I kind of, I used the teaching, and I was doing it, and it was okay. But within a halfway through the year, I realized that wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, why didn't you like teaching anymore? Is it because you weren't doing specific things that you wanted? It was like the programs, um, the school wasn't great. Being a teacher is like you have to be a really different type of person. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was I've always been like I've had an entrepreneurial mind. I've always like had really good big ideas of I want to do things my way. Mm-hmm. I don't want to work for anybody else. And so what happened was halfway through the year 
I got a coaching opportunity to coach a high school lacrosse team at Coronado High School. Awesome. Yep. And so through that, I was coaching over 200 families. Wow. It's a, lot, a huge program. And I was given an opportunity to get a new job. Yeah. So I got a new job at one of the nightclubs. I was working at XS nightclub. And I was making really good money doing that for the next four or five years. Mm -hmm. And I just started saving all my money. Yeah. And then I was given another opportunity from one of the lacrosse parents to get into real estate. So you've kind oh, of... Wow done it all before real estate yeah no i mean not at all i just i was young i, I yeah. had i mean you had all the dream jobs that i wanted when i was young i wanted to be a club promoter <laughs> i never did it just because yeah you know well the best part about working in that industry is the networking yeah like i met so many cool people oh, I bet, yeah. that at the Wynn hotel and i made a lot of cash like i was a single guy i was living in a condo that cost me like 400 500 bucks a month how, like it was really cheap to live here how do you make cash being a promoter a club promoter well i wasn't a promoter i was working in the nightclub i was like oh, a bar back got uh, it okay <laughs> yeah, yeah so bar backs do make a lot of money yeah so we okay. were making a lot of cash mm -hmm. and so i just started saving it because yeah. i never had money like that before and then i got into real estate and yeah. as i was transitioning to real estate i bought my first house and that was in 2014, Why? 15. So did, did you already you? quit teaching at this point? Or? Yeah, I only taught for one year. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then question. you're just like, no, nah, I'm not going to do like, this. I was like, one year and done. Retired. Right, so we went from um, grad school, right, yep. to a teacher out here in Vegas. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then from teaching to becoming a bar back, from bar back to being a realtor. Real estate, yep. Realtor, and yep. what made you decide to switch from even being bar back to real estate? If you're making such good money. So <clears throat> this is the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I was working at Trist Nightclub and Excess Nightclub. And they were closing one of the nightclubs for to remodel it. And they were going to rebrand it. And during that time, they kind of gave us like an ultimatum. They're like, you can you could kind of take some time off yeah. and, and then come back. Or you could just kind of work some time. And I just took that opportunity. I was like, I'm just going to, this is the, this is the opportunity to just leave the industry altogether. Okay. Cause I was doing the real estate a little bit and I wasn't doing it full time. And to be successful, you really got to do it full time. Yeah. And I was super grateful for that job, but there's so many people that are still in that job, you know, they're in their mid forties and they're getting up there because once you leave that cash, it's hard to go into something else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I was given this ultimatum to kind of transition. I took it. I transitioned out of the industry, which is great. And I just got fully engulfed in real estate. So I haven't, been, I haven't left since. Yeah. So like when you say you got into real estate, what exactly <laughs> does that mean? Like were you going into Airbnb right away or yeah, was it no. like? Yeah, it was a long transition. So I bought my first house. That mm -hmm. was like my first real estate experience. How much was the first house? I bought it for 310000 Wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, you know, it was a good, with a pool, had everything I ever wanted Okay. for 310000 Now, where I'm from in Long Island, New York, the real estate is really expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's double, and then the property taxes are like 10 times the amount. Yeah. So... My more I always use this example. My mortgage is sixteen hundred bucks all in, where I have friends that pay three grand a month just in property taxes. Wow! So it's very affordable to live here. And so I bought my first house. I was just like shocked of how cheap it was, and then I just started telling my friends and family back home. I'm like, I still can't believe how cheap it is to live here. What year was this? 2015. Okay, mm. 2015, 300k home. That is. A pretty massive home at that time because I remember looking in 2012 if I was going to move here in Vegas, and it was like 3,000 square feet homes in for the mid 200s. Yeah, so it was just a basic home at the time. I mean, the market was hot back then too. Okay, oh, you see. know, it was just a four bed, 25, I think no, 2,000 square feet with mm. a pool in Sunridge. Yeah. So it's a good area. Um, so I bought my first house, and then I became a real estate agent. And so I went all in and being a real estate agent for what did, Remax I was working for. Okay. So um, what did you do with that first home? Is it for you to live in or yeah, were you making yeah, I money bought off it, it? I bought it to live in. Okay. And I still live there now. Nice. Seven years later. 
Yep. That's, a, that's a nice mortgage payment now. Yeah. So, so that was kind of it's like almost your, paid off pretty much. That was like your first win in real estate kind of thing, right? Well, yeah, because I bought that house for three ten. Now yeah. it's worth seven fifty. Wow! You know, it's it's a in seven years it completely doubled. Mm -hmm. Did you think you would ever get to that when you first bought the home? Yeah, I mean, when you buy real estate, yeah. that's always the 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 path, right? You wanted to appreciate in value. I think what a lot of our listeners, um, because a lot of people don't own homes or they're trying to buy a home, you know, they don't even know why they want a home yet or what they should do. You know, what was your reason for buying that first home? Yeah, that's a great point. So this is what I say, and this is so blunt and it's so true. If you rent a house, you're never going to get that money back. Yeah. Mm. You're pissing it down the drain mm -hmm. every month. There's 0% chance you get that money back. If you buy a house and you pay it off, there's a 100% chance you could get that, that money back. So all that money you're paying towards your house, it's like a savings account. It's the best analogy I could use. Okay. So... I'm, my house is almost paid off. Yeah, I did a I did a shorter term loan, did a 15 year loan, and I just I just paid a lot extra over the mortgage every single month because I want to pay that house off. Yeah, because once that house is paid off, there's nothing that could happen that could right. ever take it away from you. And so I, that's what I did. So that was your real first win. It was really being smart with your money. Yep, knowing that you didn't want to lose it. You know. Yeah, because here in Vegas, there's a big problem. the The problem here is people are very illiterate with uh financial stature meaning they have no structure of money yeah. mm. i would say a good 75 percent of the people who live here have no like mental capacity of to save their money to track their money the right way they just go and blow it i mean they, i think so that's all over america not even just Vegas. no i think it's very bad here yeah but you it, think it's it, the culture like, yes it's a, it's a culture issue there's just casinos every mm -hmm. everywhere you go in the gas station there's just like temptations yeah. just to spend money airport yeah just everywhere he, it, where i'm from there's none of that mm -hmm. you can't go to a bar right. at two o'clock in the morning but are you, you talking can't. about uh the way the locals are living like that because obviously if i'm a tourist coming to vegas yeah, yeah i'm spending money going I'm, everywhere i'm talking about i'm talking about locals okay i'm talking about people who live here full time have you seen that, Justin? Because you're a local. You've Whoa. born and raised in Las Vegas. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Really? Yeah, I would say that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because people, I'm like, if you pulled, especially my friends, you know, if like, you pulled a hundred of your friends your age, how many would you say rent? Uh, most of them. Yeah, most really? of them actually. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I feel like. And why is that? <clears throat> um, probably because I'm not sure actually. Maybe because they don't save their money right so it's to my point there that the their financial literacy is just not where it should be yeah now it's probably not their fault right and it and growing up i didn't have that either yeah. my parents were not financially like hey you need to do this you need to save your they always like save your money but they were like if you invest it correctly yeah it will put you in a much better space yeah right? i had the same thing so i have i had good mentors throughout my life eventually i got I got into that where they were teaching me, hey, you need to buy real estate and rent it and hang on to it. And then down the line, you'll be in a much better space. So when did you buy um, your first rental property? I bought it six months after I got my real estate license. Probably even closer. Actually, probably four or five months. And and how far apart was that from buying your first home? It was in the fir my first year. Whoa. Yeah. His so, first year of buying a home, dang, he also hustling. bought a rental. Yep. I'm I'm on my third home. I'm like seven years in and I still don't have my rental yet. I'm working on it this year, trying to get at least two of them. Yep. But that's insane, man. I think maybe because I lived in L.A. my whole life, I can't do that. So I had, but I had like a little bit of a driving force. My cousin Joe, who I was working with back in New York, who bought the condo, Yeah. he mm. was the one kind of pushing me to get my real estate license. He was like, go get your license. We're going to start buying rental properties. Yeah. And he's older than me, and he's been very successful. And I, and he his like his math to the madness was really simple. We're gonna buy a smaller, simple, easy house in the best area. And so he was like, "Where do you live?" And I'm like, "I live in Sunridge. It's the best area. I coach here. It's Coronado High School. It's the best public high school. This is where everyone wants to live because they could go there." And he's like, "Okay, we're gonna find." He's like, "Find the cheapest house in that area." And I was like, okay, I sent him three houses. 
One was two fifty. I think we bought it for two fifty five. Mm. And he was like, "Cool." And he's a like, single family home. Single family home. And he's like, "Okay, look, our mortgage." Zinju chili is a crunchy garlic chili oil, aka chili crisp. And what's really cool about the chili is that it's vegan. Yes. They have two batches. They have the OG batch, which is the normal spicy level, and then they have the X batch, which is really, really spicy. <laughs> You've had it. It's very spicy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which one's your favorite? I love the OG batch just okay. because I can put it on everything. Guys, Zinju Chili will send you guys a free 9-ounce jar. All you got to do is cover shipping. So go to their website, zinju.com, or click the link in our description box and use the promo code WINNING for your free chili jar. All right, guys, so we got Gift Lux here with this amazing, beautiful, full-service gift. Um, if you don't like tequila or even drinking, they can switch it out and put all kinds of snacks in there. Whether it's chips and nuts, premium snacks I'm talking about. Have you ever had the Sahalis? I have not. It's the ones with like uh, premium pistachios oh. with flavors. And yeah, they're that. like 10 bucks a bag. Like They're expensive. Yeah, yeah. So they can do that. Um, they also have all kinds of stuff. So um, reach out to thegiftflux.net. Uh, use promo code WINNING for 20% off. It's going to be $1,100 a month all in. We have to put down 20%. And our all-in mortgage is going to be around eleven hundred bucks. He's like, "What do you think you could rent it out for?" And I'm like, "I think seventeen hundred. Wow. wow, yeah, off the bat, just like yeah, that? right off the bat. Wow. Because back then the prices were so cheap and the interest rates were so cheap, you could cash flow right away. And that's what we did. That doesn't even make sense to me though. If if everyone mortgages eleven hundred a month, I mean, back in LA, people would just be renting it for twelve hundred, twelve fifty. Yeah, you so know. the the Vegas rental market is one of the best rental markets in the country, because to your point, mm. you have a hundred friends. How many of them rent? Most of them, right? So there's a high demand for rentals I see. here in Vegas. Okay, I don't know how it is in LA. I don't really follow that market too much, but you're able to really take advantage of those silly people who constantly rent mm -hmm. when you buy a piece of real estate and you rent it. Yeah. So we bought our first one. And we were cash flowing 500 bucks a month. I'm like, holy. Oh. To me, it was like a really good yeah. deal at the time. And he's like, look. He's like, this is just the first one. We're going to do a lot more of them. He's like, but wait, because soon that rent is going to go to 2,500. Yeah. Wow. In a few years down the line. Yeah. And he was right. It did. So now we're charging 2,500 and my mortgage is only 1,100. Yeah. Okay. You know, so now we're cash flowing some really good money. We're doubling our mortgage payment on just one house. As a young kid at that time, um, like, what were you doing with that money? That I had made? no clue, man. Like, I had no clue what to do. I, I just listened to my cousin. Like, I like if if my cousin told me to jump off the bridge because yeah. it was safe, I would do it. Mm. Like, there's some people in your life that uh, would like I would do anything for it would be him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he was yeah. really looking after me, you know, from from afar. Mm -hmm. But it's just because he's successful. Right. Like you you I wouldn't take that advice from somebody that wasn't successful, right? Right. So I took that advice because I've seen him. He works super hard. Um he's just a great person and he just pushed me like this is what we're going to do. And he just showed me how to do it. Mm -hmm. And once you show me how to do something and it works, I go on. And so I just went all in. I was like, all right, let's buy another one. That's let's go. I, I saved up money and I was like, let's go buy another one. <coughs> and that's what that's what that's what we did. And uh we you know, we partnered a lot on a lot of rentals together. And yeah. then there was a point where I was like, All right, I, I I'm kinda he kinda clipped the wings off me and he's like, Go. Yeah, go wow. fly on your own. So now, um, after having all these homes, right? You bought a few now. I guess, uh, when did you start going from long-term rentals to an Airbnb? So, the long-term rentals are amazing. The problem now is that the money became too expensive and the prices really shot up in Vegas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I was buying condos for 140000 130000 when I first got into it and houses for 250000 and fast forward to today, that those houses are five hundred thousand, wow. yeah, and those condos are close to three hundred thousand. So are you are you mad about that? About how it's going? Because well, I'm not mad because all those properties I bought so long ago yeah. doubled yeah. and tripled, right? <laughs> right, right so right. how could I be yeah. mad? It just makes it a lot more difficult because it's to, it's still cheaper than almost everywhere else in I, America. It, it is. It, so I'm not mad, and the only 
I'm I'm not mad at all. I'm really to answer your question. I'm not mad. I shouldn't be mad. I'm I'm not really that big of a greedy person. Yeah. Um. So you just have to play the game. You have to wait mm-hmm. for like this past downturn six months ago. Yeah. Like we saw a little bit of a dip, so I tried to buy during that downturn. You were able to get better deals. Mm-hmm. Right. And so going back into short term rentals, I was five years in. So about year five and a half, I was shown the short term rental business in Henderson. And then <coughs> from from there, uh, so this was straight into Airbnb. Yeah. yeah so okay. We you the the real definition is short term rental. Got it. Right. Okay. So got it. We were buying short term rentals that we put on Airbnb. Mm-hmm. And this uh another mentor of mine his name's sean cunningham he was just like i know you love buying rentals i love rentals too he has a full property management company check this out and he was just showing me he's like look you could buy this house your mortgage would be 2500 bucks and you could rent it out and bring in like seven thousand dollars a month well, and this is probably what 20, <clears throat> 2020 because you're talking about five years later yeah um yeah yeah, 2020, right after COVID, I started. Oh, okay. So this is kind of crazy because everyone's always talking about on social media about, you know, Airbnb. There's so many people coaching Airbnb and how much money they make off each property. <coughs> yep. They're even saying, you know, you don't have to buy a property. You can just, uh, you know, get a rental and then, you know, get the landlord's permission. Yeah, do the arbitrage. And do that. But it took this guy five years to do his first Airbnb. Yeah. You know? Like that's it's not easy, guys. No, it's not. I mean, but I'm a real estate investor, so mm-hmm. I, I don't go and sublease properties. I don't go lease and then go throw it on Airbnb. And it's a real business. It's not an easy business. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, you're just buying a piece of real estate and renting it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll buy something that I think is a good buy, and then I will either short term rental it or long term rental it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm wrong, where I, I think I can make a lot of money on a short term rental, and it just it doesn't work, so I'll have to flex it back to a long-term rental. Oh, wow. But okay. the game is simple. You're buying a piece of real estate, and you're having somebody else pay it off for you. That's it. Uh, what was, I guess, the end goal with uh, the Airbnb um, situation? So I was since I'm from New York, I have a lot of visitors, and I get a, a, really a lot of visitors every year. And the question they would ask me is, Jason, do you have a place I could stay? So that kind of turned my wheels a little bit where I, I didn't have anything. But mm-hmm. then o- over time, I did. I did. I started buying some properties, and then it kind of snowballed into, all right, do you have anything bigger? Oh, wow. I'm like, I don't. And then I'm like, all right, now I got to be- build out the biggest ones that I possibly can. So that's kind of the secret that I'm getting here is that you didn't really go out and just kind of overdo yourself and bite too much that you couldn't handle. You waited for people to ask you do you have this? You waited for the demand. Yeah. So the, I, I knew there was a demand for it because there's so many people coming here to visit, right? There's mm-hmm. people moving here and then there's people like right after COVID, we got such a wave Ooh. of people that were moving here. So there was a, the best businesses are ones that solve problems. And so there was a big demand for rentals and there was a big demand for short term rentals because yeah. everyone was coming here. Our stuff was open during COVID when in LA and New York, it wasn't. Right. People were coming here to visit because they wanted to get out of that political crap that was going on. Yeah. And so, yeah, we just started building them. And we we went one by one, and I have partners with them. And then uh, there was a time where I was like, we need to build the biggest, baddest one. Yeah. And so we built San Gabriel, which is a 9,000-square-foot mansion. Wow. In Henderson. And we just went all in on that one. Is wow. this... Now, is this the one that you landed a TV deal on? Yes, we did. So I'm a big diehard UFC fan. Okay. And I've worked a little bit in the MMA community. My friends fight. Uh, my my good friends are in the UFC, and they box. And somebody saw it, saw a video that was on social media. Yeah. And it got to a producer. Um, That's that crazy, with the man. UFC. And... Long story short, he walked through the door and he's like, "I'll take the house. I want it." That's wow. crazy. congratulations, man. That's yeah. such a huge win. Yeah, it was. A, you know, it was surreal because um, I'm the biggest fan of like Dana White and the UFC. Like, yeah, they are just. I go to all the fights. I watch every single fight, and my friends fight. Yeah. And so, to get that done, they were just like, 
I was like, I'm the biggest UFC fan. And so they were like, we're going to film a show here. And I was like, okay. I had no clue what the show was yeah. and whatnot. I just said yes because it, it was just a really cool opportunity and just a, right. another relationship to build. And then it ended up being Dana White's Power Slap show. Wow. That's crazy. And I know, again, uh, it's still surreal that, it's, uh, that it happens, but they have been amazing to work with. They promote our, t- our house so well in a, in a positive light. Um, we've got nothing but good feedback. And so. And your first intent of getting the biggest and baddest Airbnb was for your friends and family, not even for something like this. Right? Well, when I first saw that, my, my brother showed, I saw the house, right? I saw the house listed. And then my brother brought it up to me again. And he was like, we should look at this house. Like, it's insane. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So we went and saw it. And I'm like, it's going to be too much of a construction headache Mm. to do. And I suck at construction. I don't flip really that much. And then I was like, you know what? I know somebody that is really good at construction. I'd be curious to see if they would partner with me. Yeah. And so I partnered with... um, another investor here in town his name is tyler hubs and tyler is like a mad genius when it comes to construction and just real estate development and i brought him to the house and i was like look this is like the sickest airbnb we just got to modernize it a little bit and make it awesome and he was like i got it so he's like just give me six months to redo this whole house yeah and he turned it into a monstrosity when you first bought it, how much was it listed at? It was one point four million. And what is it worth now? I it's gotta be worth in two point five. Wow. wow. It's gotta be worth two point five. But we put a lot of money into Jeez. it. We put about three hundred thousand into it. Man, it's win after win hearing these stories. It, it's an amazing journey but, to follow. But you man. know what? It's like I don't want it to make it sound so easy because yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, headaches of yeah. and stress along the way. You mm-hmm. know, you, you're rebuilding a nine thousand square foot house. I didn't know that the house was going to be on TV. Yeah. Right. I didn't know. You know, in Henderson, you have to get licenses. I didn't know yeah. if it was going to pass inspection the right way. And so we just, you know, I don't, we just had this vision of of the house and. Luckily, somebody saw it, and now it's on television, which is really cool. You think they saw it on Instagram because you just started gaining some traction? Because you're blowing up right now on Instagram. Like, how did that even happen? Um, I don't know. Like the house, somebody we did a lot of media on the house. So what we did was we were invited influencers to go stay at the house. Nice, and just do like a vlog review of mm. the house. Chuckets came to the house. Nice. And it got out around Vegas. So they yeah. were like, all right, Griggs has the biggest one in Henderson. And some hosts were sending us people to rent it. And we only had it on Airbnb for a few months. Yeah. And then that's when the UFC caught. Wow. Caught nice. Nice. You know, ever since I moved to Vegas, which was not too long ago, uh, I've only moved to Vegas a few months ago, like half a year ago. And I've seen this through your social media and this is all recent times. Like these things are happening so fast. Your growth is happening so fast that I didn't realize it was just a couple months ago. Yeah, you know? yeah. So about a year ago, I I decided to go all in in social media. Yeah, nice. like I was doing little bits and pieces, uh, but I hired a company to really help me. Okay. So that's when I knew that I needed help, and I hired this company called Jump Force. They've been amazing, and they just handle everything. Nice. So I give them ideas, we yeah. film, um, they did a crap ton of content in that new house, and the Airbnb stuff kind of, that's kind of what helped me take off a little bit, mm. because it's a really popular topic in real estate. I had a question about that, actually. Um, since like we have hotels and casinos and all that stuff, is it really like difficult? Is is there a competition, or is it like hard to even yeah, start? Yeah, yeah. It's like a catch twenty two. This is like one of the best markets to do it in. Okay, but the casinos don't really like it. Right, but they should like it because we're bringing in so many people to the town to put in those casinos for mm-hmm. them to make money. And every freaking casino sold out every weekend anyway. Mm-hmm. Yep, especially you know, for example, we had uh, Super Bowl weekend. It wasn't even Super Bowl in Vegas yet. It was in yeah, it was sold Arizona. Out. It was sold out. Yeah. yeah, everywhere was sold out. You know, I had friends saying, "Hey, can I stay at your place?" Because we couldn't get a room. You know, there's when you go to a casino and they have a sports book and you guys go down there, usually you just sit there and you gamble or you drink a beer and it's free. 
But Super Bowl weekend, it's like hundreds of dollars just to sit at Sportsbook. You know? Yeah. That's how crazy it is. Well, so. Vegas is like turn the corner. So like when I first, first, first started buying real estate, it wasn't like it was today. So yeah. like I, I use this example. I bought this rental property and I bought it with my mom actually. And then like th- three weeks later, they announced the hockey team was coming. Oh. And then the real estate whoop went straight like it was insane like the house went up a hundred grand in wow. like three or four months for hockey yeah because the That's hockey crazy. team came and so once that happened the whole transformation of vegas changed mm-hmm. it changed into like a gambling entertainment city to like a sports entertainment city and now like the casinos have to compete against the hockey team and the Raiders and like everyone's like just on their a-, a game right now. Yeah. Like they're bringing the sphere in like all these crazy projects just to get people here. And it's constantly evolving and not one thing stays stagnant for so long. All the shows are constantly changing. The hotels are constantly changing, upgrading. Yeah. And so Vegas exploded. Mm-hmm. Right. It, and it's still going through the roof. And you saw this with Summerlin. Like, Summerlin was not anything near what it was five, six years ago. Right. Like, it stopped at, like, pretty much Red Rock. Yeah. Right, yeah, Now, yeah. they're like, all right, we're going to go even further west and northwest. North, yep. and just blow out that mountain and just keep building and building yeah. and building. And now, look, like, the prices in Summerlin are insane. Man, as Vegas keeps building, <laughs> as Vegas keeps building, uh, you're also going to keep growing because that's more homes for you to buy. Yeah. I mean, right? I just love this town. I mean, the best part about it is there's so much to do. The yeah. Networking is great. There's so much to do. There's so much opportunity here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, it's funny. I was just talking to somebody who does real estate in like Kentucky and it's like the same stuff over there. There's yeah. no new homes being built. It's the same hundred year old houses. Yeah. That they're constantly having to work and there's no new developments or new areas like for us there's a new development area every day right 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 next. so it's a cool place to do this business in that's awesome yeah i was gone for like six <laughs> years out in la and then when i came back i see the growth and i'm like yo this is crazy yeah especially like we got the formula one stuff coming right i didn't, right. I didn't like again it's like that's insane right if you look at hotel prices during that week they're, it's it's crazy. Yeah, you know some the hotel rooms are going for like fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a night. So, do you recommend everyone who's listening right now and watching on YouTube um, that they should get into real estate here in Vegas, like in this crazy market? I, I do. I mean, I think being in real estate is the best business to be in. Yeah, and just just like using me as an example, I'm not some like wicked wizard. Um, you know, I was I'm just a regular person, blue collar yeah. person. And you could become very wealthy by buying real estate and renting it. Even in the market today where people are saying, I'm going to wait. Yeah. I'm not going to buy right now. Interest rates are bad. you know. And here you have this guy, Jason, who is continuing to buy homes. He's buying the dip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just buying because real estate never goes down, like overall. Like, right. yeah, it could go on a bad five-year run, four-year run. Um, but, you know, you look at, just like the richest people in the world, they have so much real estate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like my cousin uses this example, and I'm not a political guy, political guy at all. So don't get offended. Hope we don't get offended. Mm-hmm. But like Donald Trump, if you go through Manhattan, he owns every building. Yeah, him and his family. They never sold it. They have all these buildings, and they just rent the crap out of them. Apartment buildings, commercial buildings, skyscraper buildings. They own the whole city, pretty yeah. much. Him and his family. And that's how they got wealthy. They, he didn't get wealthy by being the president of the United States. He right, right. Wealthy because he owns millions and millions, like gazillions of dollars worth of real estate in New York and everywhere else. Mm-hmm. And that's why he also pays no taxes, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why he always has those headlines. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm not getting into that. I'm just the the example is just to to do part of like the richest people in the world own, own a lot of real estate, mm-hmm. and so I'm just basically banking it on that. That, yeah, yeah, I just want to buy. I don't go buy like crazy deals because I'm. I, it's an educated, directed like investment. Yeah. So I'm investing this money. I'm gonna get it back one day, and then it's gonna appreciate. But my business model is simple: I'm buying real estate to rent it. That's it. So right now you have 27 homes. 27 total. Yeah. And 
when are you going to stop? What's your end goal with this? Um, so that's a good question. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever stop because it's just a fun. It's a it's a fun, never ending game. It's like Monopoly. what I love about Zindru yeah. Chili is that you can basically put it on anything. Yeah. They don't use traditional uh, Asian ingredients like mm -hmm. fermented black beans or Shiswan uh, peppercorns. So you can literally put it on every food. Yeah, I put it on my eggs, put it on my tacos. I even use it for uh, barbecue sauces. Damn, there you go, yeah, man. It's, it's I, amazing. So the owners, uh, Zin and Andrew, mm -hmm. they actually use it on In-N-Out burgers too. No way. I got to try that. Yeah, okay. I'm down. So guys... Uh, Go to our link in the description box or go to zinju.com. Use promo code winning to get your free jar of Zinju chili. So I've actually personally used gift Lux. For every single client that I have, mm -hmm. I've sent them a gift for Christmas. Oh, really? And they all loved it. Yeah. So whether you're in Las Vegas and you do the door service directly or you're from all over the world, this guy will send it and ship it to your client or your customer or your friend or family member mm -hmm. so a lot of mine because i'm out here in vegas uh, a lot of them are out in la and he shipped over a bottle of champagne for new year's with champagne glasses wow. and it turned out really nice yeah so if you guys want to check it out go to thegiftlux.net and use code winning right mm -hmm. for 20 percent off also follow their instagram gift Lux, and uh, thank you for responding to this video gift Lux. so monopoly it's fun, right? It's fun when you're winning the Monopoly, right? Because mm -hmm. you're just like collecting and collecting and yeah. collecting. But the journey of getting to that point where you get the little houses on the board and you start collecting, um, that's fun for me. I love that. So like on the way here, I had a call with a guy in San Diego um, and through social media, people are giving me opportunities of deals. And so that's the best part of where I'm at now through social media. People are like, oh, Jason will buy that. Yeah. He's good in this. Air. He's good at um, vacation rentals. Right. This would make a good vacation rental. He'll buy that. And are all of your 27 homes in the Las Vegas area? No, they're not. Um, most of them are in Henderson, but I have some. I have one in New York. I have one in Can I have three in Kansas City and two in Gulfport, Mississippi. Wow. Why yep. out there? It, just good deals. They were mm, okay. really good deals. Like they were, they were on a me mega sale, like a Black Friday sale. They were 20, 30 percent off. And, and those aren't like partnering with family or anything. It's just great deals. Just gonna invest. So I, the the Mississippi ones, I trained my twenty one year old next door neighbor in New York how to do this business. Okay, oh, and he went on Facebook and he was just networking around and he was like, "Yo, Jay, I got this deal. What do you think about it?" And the situation was somebody was uh, had inherited a house, didn't really want it, and just sold it to us. Yeah. What's That's your awesome. What's your favorite property <coughs> that you um, have? My favorite property are the ones with no headache. And what, what does do that mean? mean by that? Yeah. What I mean by that is, it, so like the business that I'm in is you're buying a piece of real estate and you're renting it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's my it's important that whoever is renting it from you isn't a pain in the ass. <laughs> So you want them to pay you every single month and not right. miss mortgage payments. So I think that'll answer your question. Um, my favorite properties are the ones that pay me every month and, and that aren't a pain. Because mm -hmm. I've had some tenants that are that are, that are a pain. Um, cause damage. You know? cause, not, not too much. Oh, but okay. like, I do a really good job of vetting the tenant up front because you're like marrying that person for the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So if you marry somebody that's being a jerk or you don't like them, it's not gonna it's not going to be a good relationship. But that's the name of the game. If, if you could be good at finding good people to rent your property, even if it's for less money, mm -hmm. it's worth it. Because Got it. They'll, they're basically paying you into retirement mm -hmm. with these properties. I've never thought of it that way, marrying your, your tenant. Yeah, like you are. That. You are. Yeah. You're dating your tenant. Yep. I, I, I have one tenant. I, she's the nicest girl in the world. I've had her for almost seven years. Wow. wow. She's never missed her mortgage payment, uh, her rent payment one time. She's never complained one time. Yeah. I never hear from her. She just pays every single month, and she'll probably keep paying for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, she's just awesome. Is that like a unicorn tenant, or like how do you find someone like that? Um, you know, So I always post it on my social media because the best tenants are like referrals. Okay. Hey, this is my friend or you know they're a good person yeah but i just vet them like i just have a simple conversation i don't really care about your credit score 
Um, I just rented one over here, actually. Like, her credit score was shot. Mm. But she called me and answered her phone, and she explained her situation. Yeah. She said she was in a bad spot five, six years ago. She yeah. worked through it. She has money saved now. And, and I just heard that. I'm like, all right, I'll give you a shot. And if it doesn't work out, then it's on me. I made the bad decision, and I'll have to find another tenant down the line. Have Have you been down that route yet? Because a lot of times when people do business deals, they say, don't use any emotion in it. You know, just straight business deals. And, you know, <coughs> me, you and me, we, we both, we like to listen to people. We have good hearts and we like to help people out. You know, same thing with Justin. That's why we have this podcast because we are passionate about helping people. Yeah. And so I always feel like if I was going to help someone, it's going to bite me in the ass later on. Um, has any of that happened to you? Not really. I mean, so the cool part about, you know, owning these houses and being a real estate agent is I get a lot of business from those tenants. They mm -hmm. like me and then they use me as their agent. <coughs> cool. Oh, okay. So they're like, hey, Jason, we're ready to buy a house now. Yeah. Which is awesome. So now that tenant paid me all that money, right, yeah. over all those years to pay my house down. And now I'm making a commission off them buying their own house. My God, I never even thought about that as a realtor. So a lot of people who rent homes, sometimes they rent to buy. But then can you even imagine you renting and your landlord is a realtor and now you're buying a house with your landlord? That's like, like the ultimate setup. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. good setup. But, but these, these, chess here. these tenants like me. Yeah. yeah they like to. me because I don't break their chops. I, I'm, I'm not a dick to any of them. I really care about them because yeah. I treat them like my clients. Right. They're my tenants, but I treat them like my clients. So if any of them have an issue, it gets taken care of right away. Yeah. I'm on it. Text me at this number. It's not a machine. It's not somebody else. It's my personal cell phone number. Yeah. Text me. Hey, the, the toilet's clogged. Uh, we need somebody over here. Great. I, I call the plumber. Boom. They're there within two hours. Where do you draw the line of the relationship between being a very good client and, you know, business thing to friends? Um, Are you friends with any of your tenants? You know what? I, I did have an issue. I rented a, a place to one of my former players. And it, the only issue that I had was it's hard for me to ask somebody for money. Uh, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like that was the only part that got a little sticky where I just didn't feel good. Like, hey, yeah. I got to come pick up the rent. Um, so what I'll do is I'll set up like auto automatic payments. Okay. So it's like set up and it just automatically pulls from them and I get a yeah. notification that it came to me. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't love renting. I would rather not rent to direct friends and family, but I really haven't had too many problems, man. Like, you know, I that's, even... that's true. So <laughs> when I was living in LA, um, I was renting out our ADU, mm -hmm. uh, our additional dwelling unit yep. in the back. Uh, to a friend, a good friend of mine, and I gave him a great deal. You know, all in price. Forget about the bills. This is just what it is. Um, if your girlfriend wants to live here, that's fine. Two people. You know, no worries. You're the homie. And at some point, after a year or two, I'm like, man, I feel bad. Like I know I gave this guy a deal, but I'm like, should I give him a cheaper deal? Like I feel so bad taking money from my friend. Yeah. Like mm. you know, I totally get that. But you know what? It's business, and, and like. You gotta you gotta draw the line. Yeah. Like I have no problem, uh, just saying like it's business. Yeah. Like where, uh, you know, I do business with friends a lot, um, and some some of my friends understand that it's business and some yeah. don't, and so I really only work with the ones that it's like non emotional. Yeah. And it's like, look, this is what we're doing. We're buying right. a place, and that's it. And so I, as time went on, I started bringing my friends into buying real estate with me. People that are from New York that can't invest in New York because it's so expensive. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I bought one with my my a really smart friend of mine. His name's Todd, and he just gets it. Like he's like, okay, we're gonna put down twenty, you know, twenty percent total, ten percent each, and we just collect. And he loves it. Like nice. it's just extra money for him. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a very successful job, but it's just extra. And he realize he knows that down the line we're gonna sell it for a lot more money. Or we're just going to keep it for passive income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds fun. <coughs> so, yeah. I mean, it sounds, it is because if you don't, you don't have to work. Yeah. It's just, you know, it, you make money in your sleep, as they say. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of like what you do right now? You're, you're licensed as a realtor, mm -hmm. right? You're not teaching. Uh, you don't do, you do coaching right now still? Yeah. It's still for fun, it. pretty much. Yeah. For right. Fun. Um, so 
are you pretty much financially free? Are you retired? Like, what do you do? Um, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm financially free because, you know, I still have bills, but I will be at a point where yeah. at some point I will retire and retire off of my rental properties mm-hmm. where I don't have to work anymore. And it's just everything is just paying. My rentals are paying for my whole life. I feel like that's everyone's end goal is to get to that point where they can just retire and collect that passive income every month. Yeah, you know? I know. And the thing that bothers me, sorry to cut you off, but like it, it's a set plan. It works. Yes. Right. Yep. So why doesn't anyone do it? Because mm. it's hard. Why is it hard, though? It's it's like the easiest business, in my opinion. Yeah. It's not hard to Maybe, buy real estate and rent it. it, it it's literally the, anyone could go do it. I think it might be the discipline. Not everyone has discipline to do the, that. There right? you or go. education, right. maybe? Yeah, or it's, it, it's the discipline, of course, because what I've seen here in town is everyone likes to flip. Yeah. Everyone wants cash now. Nobody wants cash later. Like, like it's a, I use the baseball analogy. I hit base hits, little base hits all the time. Very rarely will I hit a home run. Mm. These guys, a lot of the other investors, love the home runs all the time. So they go up to the plate and they want to swing the home run. I think everyone has a different perspective of what their goals are. You know, for people like you and me who want that passive income, it's because we want to be financially free. We want to enjoy the time with our kids and be a family dad, right? And so these guys who are flipping homes getting cash, they're like, I'm going to flip this one home because I want to buy this Ferrari. I'm going to flip (laughs) this next home because I want to buy this house for my mom. Yep. You know, so they have goals for every single flip. Where for us, it's an end goal of our life. Yeah, I think you nailed it. That's a great, great way to put it. I just think that people are just very greedy. Some some of the people are greedy and just like not smart. Like mm. these guys that I'm talking about, they 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 get they know what's going on. Yeah, they get the real estate industry, and so like when they go and flip a house, I'm like, why wouldn't you keep this thing? And yeah. they don't even think about it. They're like, oh, they're like, and throw away the hundred grand profit. No, we need that hundred grand. Right. And I'm like, yeah, but you're gonna get that hundred grand, just not today. Yeah. You're gonna get it in three. Right. It's gonna be two hundred grand. Yeah. In five years from now. Mm-hmm. And but that's not the their business model. So when I approach them, it's just like when they abro- approach me about a flip, and they're like, hey, why don't you flip that? I'm like, no, like I'm keeping this thing forever. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the cool part about it is the business, like I, I could build this business, right, of my rental, we'll call it empire, whatever it is, and then you could pass it down. Ah, uh, right? yeah. Right? That's cool. That's what the Trump family does, mm-hmm. right? It's three generations of them passing down real estate, and they'll never sell it. And and that's what I kind of want to do, where, like, this is a great business, it, and it could be handed down to the next generation. Yeah. It seems like also, too, uh, you've been able to create like a good balanced lifestyle, too, you know, like as far as like being with your family and all that. Um, does real estate, you know, help with that in a sense? Well, or I does it get it, crazy? I, I don't think it helps. I think it's very hard. Um, you have to have like a partner that understands like. That the job never shuts off. Ah, My brain never shuts off. I'm an entrepreneur. I always have new ideas. I always want to try new things. Mm -hmm. So you really have to have a partner that gets it. Got it. And if you don't, then it's not going to be a good me- a good mesh. Are you talking about like your your spouse or? Yeah, yeah. So oh, like okay. My my wife, she's yeah. amazing. Um, you know, we both didn't have much when we moved yeah. here, and, and and now it blossomed into something. And so. When throughout the process, she kind of saw me like work. I work hard, dude. And I work really long hours and probably working 60, 70 hours a week. I'm on the phone, hundreds of text messages, calls, just nonstop. And it's still nonstop. Mm. But it paid off. And it's going to pay off really nice down the line where we don't have to work. And these properties pay. And we're going to have all this time. So to answer your question is... It's it's like a, a, a catch twenty two again. Like it's so much work, but it's worth it. I see. But you need to have like a support system of of this person being on board mm-hmm. with what you're doing. Because if they don't believe in it or what you're doing, what's going to happen is they're going to be like, oh, you know, stop working. Right. You know, stop working. But the reason why she says like don't stop working is because she sees it working. Right. She's she's seeing the progression as we go. Yeah. And so, 
you know, any entrepreneur, if they're married to somebody who is, because my wife isn't like that. She yeah. won't, she doesn't have the, let's, here. she won't have the, like, let's go start a business or yep. this could turn into this. Yep. She's just very, very simple person yeah. mm-hmm. where, you know, I want to spend time with my kid. I want to spend time with my family. Yep. The money doesn't care, doesn't play any factor role in yep. her life. But that's, I'm different. I right, want to make right. a lot of money because I like it with a lot of money becomes more opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so funny because that's exactly me and my wife too. Um, everything that you said, it's exactly that. And so she always tells me, when is it going to be enough? Right. right. You know? And I'm like, <coughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. It'll be enough when you t- when we can go somewhere and you say, hmm, this costs this much. I don't want to worry about that. Right. So to me, it's not enough yet. You so, know? I had like a light mold moment like two weeks ago. We went to the car dealership and the, uh, we were looking. She wa- how were we looking at? Oh, Mercedes. We had Mercedes, yeah. and we were looking at something like the SUVs, right? And the guy was like, "All right, it's a thousand dollars, eleven hundred dollars a month." And her reaction to that number and my reaction to that number were different. Yeah, my reaction to that number was, "It's not that bad." It, it being truthfully honest, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. not that bad. But to her, it was a lot. It's a, it, right. it is a mortgage, right? It, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot right? to me. It, 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 yeah. It's a lot. So my point being is that when we got back in the car, yeah. I was like, "Look, we have this property, just this one property who, yeah. that we profit a thousand dollars a month off of. So that would pay for your car, right?" And then it hit her. She was like, "Wow, yeah, like I, I could get a free car." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. like." But it's not free, right? This business, this house yep. pays for that car. That's the same way I try to tell my wife is this will pay for that. You know, and then yeah. that's when she feels better. But we'll go to simple restaurants and like, like we'll go to a Thai restaurant and she's like, <coughs> you want to get that $30 Thai steak instead of a $10 <laughs> pad Thai? You know, and I'm like, yeah. why are you worrying about right, this? Right. You know, like it, right. we just made some money off this thing. Like it's paying for it. The yes. business pays for it. You know, we're using our business credit card, right? Yep. We just finished filming a video. So, you know, it's, uh, I need to get to your level where $1,100 <laughs> car payment is nothing. Um, <laughs> well, it's not, it's not nothing, but it, it's, it, it, I guess the, maybe I said, I mean, wrong. no, no, no. It's um, just affordable. It's, it's, it's a lot right. more affordable. It's comfortable for it's, you. It's comfortable. You know, I'm not there yet where it's comfortable for me. Right. You know, I'd rather buy 27 homes first. That's why. You yeah. know, we're on different levels. But, um, you know, I have a, I guess, one of the last questions. Do you, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so last question for this episode is, um, what piece of, of uh, so the last question for this episode is, what piece of advice uh, can you give to everyone else that's listening right now about why they should get to their next win? Uh, so the biggest thing that I see is people... They don't jump in the pool. So, like, they just sit around the pool on yeah. the sideline, just always thinking, what if, what if, what if I jumped in? Mm-hmm. And there's people, like, when the when the pool's cold, there's two types of people. There's somebody who just jumps in, and then there's some people who dip their toe in or ask that person who jumped in, is it warm or yeah, is yeah, it yeah. cold? And that's the best analogy I could use. I just jumped in. Yeah. I just did. Now... I didn't jump in by myself. I was thrown in by my cousin Joe. He was just like, whoop, threw me in, and I'm swimming now. Like, I got to figure it out. Like, there's yeah. no wall around me. I'm just treading water trying to figure out this business. And if you tread water long enough, your endurance for it will, it will hit, and you will just figure it out. And that's all I did. And I figured it out through relationships, mentors, YouTube people and just people on social media asking a lot of questions because I'm not smart enough to figure this out just on my own. Mm -hmm. But the cool part for me now is that like I'm now mentoring other people and I'm just fast tracking them into the business. Like all that five years of hard work and I didn't know what anything was. I didn't know what hard money was. I didn't know what a DSCR loan was. I didn't know what short term rentals were. Now I'm like giving all the secret sauce to other people on a fast track. That's what's really cool. That's awesome. Not everyone has that uh, cousin Joe like you did. You know, no, no, I, and I'm super grateful for him, obviously. Um, but, but there are there are cousin Joes out there. Yeah, I mean, know? you're definitely the cousin Joe for everyone else that's listening now. Even for me being on this podcast with you and for me, you know, I've learned <laughs> yeah. a lot from this, and I appreciate you being here. 
Um, this was a really great episode. Yeah. Guys, um, if you want to follow uh, Jason on his Instagram, it's uh, Jay Griggs Real Estate. Yep. And then do you have a YouTube channel? Yep. I just started my YouTube. It's just Jason Griggs Real Estate. So uh, my YouTube is going to be more about breaking down investments. So awesome. I'm doing video tours. I kinda, Chuck, it's kind of gave me this little um, kind of mentorship, right? He, he's been mentoring me a little bit with the YouTube. And he was just like, you need to do home tours with an investment spin on it. Oh, cool. wow. Go yeah. show these properties and say, hey, would I buy this or not? Right. So that's what I've been doing. Well, there you go, guys. So if you want to learn more from Jason, go give him a follow. You'll see it in our description box as well. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, hopefully we can have you for the next episode. Let's do it. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Zinju Chili. They're going to send you a nine ounce jar for free. All you got to do is go to their website, zinju.com, or click the link in our description box below and put in that promo code winning for your free nine ounce jar. Thank you, Zinju Chili, for sponsoring this video. And again, thank you to Giftlux for sponsoring this video. Uh, use the promo code WINNING to get 20% off. It expires in two weeks. And just remember, also, if you're not local in Las Vegas, they can ship the gifts to anybody around the U.S. So make sure to follow them on Instagram, at Giftlux Company. Give them a follow. Give them a like. Check their stuff. Their website is also in their bio.